Hello, this is Dr. Dan Baker with a video talking about how we can use instantaneous centers of zero velocity or ICZVs for constrained pulley systems, essentially to pass the velocity from one pulley to the next. And so just a real quick review here, what is an ICZV? Well, it is the point where a body in general plane motion is rotating around at a given instant. Uh, so you can think that if you have a body in fixed axis rotation, the pin that things are rotating around is the ICZV at every instant. It doesn't change the location. But bodies in general plane motion are both translating and rotating. And so we have this tool to very quickly find um, velocities of other points on the body given um, at least a couple points. So let's take a look at that rule that we have for finding ICZVs. The primarily rule that we'll use today is going to be given the velocity of two points on a body. Okay, not one, but we do need two points. That can be a zero velocity point, but at least two points. And the line connecting these two points needs to be perpendicular to both velocity vectors. Okay, and I'll draw you a picture of that down below here. Once we have these two velocities and their vectors, we can draw a tip-to-tip -tip and tail-to-tail -tail line between the velocity vectors. Tip-to-tip -tip of the velocity vector, tail-to-tail -tail of the velocity vector. And the ICZV turns out to be at the intersection of these two lines. Let's go ahead and demonstrate how this works. So here is a body, and let's say that the velocity of A is coming up this direction. So this would be my V sub A as a vector. And noting that I drew that velocity to be perpendicular to this line connecting A and B. So the velocity at B also needs to be perpendicular. Now it could be up to the right, down to the left. Uh, we'll make this one here down to the left. So say this is VB. Okay, so here are my two velocity vectors, both being perpendicular to this line connecting them. My tip to tip and tail to tail line looks like the following from velocity tip to velocity tip is here to here, tail to tail is here to here. So we have an ICZV for this body located at that intersection point. So this ICZV turns out to be on the body. Now let's take a look at a quick example of one that might turn out to be off the body. So I'll get rid of all these guys. All right, still the same points. We'll still stick with VA. Now let's say that VB is going up this direction here, VB vector. Now my tip to tip and tail to tail line looks like the following. Here's tip to tip coming off of those, then tail to tail straight down this line connecting the two. And so given these two velocity vectors, this would be the ICZV. Like I said, it's this point acts like the point of rotation for this body. Like the body at this instant is really rotating around this point. Therefore, the, the ICZV, as the name implies, has a zero velocity. Um, and it's pretty convenient as we get into our relative velocity relationships. We won't focus on those in this lecture, um, but let's take a look at it as we can use it on pulley systems. Zoom back here a little bit. All right, here is our question. Um, we have a pulley system where F is going to drop at a half foot per second, and we're curious what's going on here with A. Essentially, what's the ratio of motion between F and A? Now, with the constraint systems, we know that the ratio of velocity between F and A is the same as the ratio of displacement between F and A, and is also the relationship or the ratio between the acceleration of F and A, right? That that ratio is equal for all of those. And so thinking about how we get started, we're going to start at either one end or the other and transfer velocities from pulley to pulley. Um, some problems we will need to start from both ends and meet in the middle. It turns out this one we can start on one end. Now, as this pulley system has multiple cables, if you've learned how to do the length technique where you're basically adding up all the lengths and worry about the changing lengths as you take a time derivative, you might remember that you need to take two different length equations. In this problem, we'll actually only need to take, um, there's no equations per se, we're just going to move pulley to pulley to pulley, so there's no difference between a multi-cable problem and a single cable problem. All right, and now in how we can work through solving this problem. 
So one thing you'll learn from experience on using this technique is that sometimes you'll start with one side of the pulley system and you'll kind of get stuck. And if you do get stuck, essentially not having two points of velocity on a pulley as you're moving through, you can flip over to the other side. What I'm saying here, different sides, basically starting with F versus starting with A. And so on this problem here, I'll take the easiest of the two routes, and that would be to know here that F drops downwards at 0.5 feet per second. Now, often it's easier to start where there's kind of more things going on. F over here is just exchanged by this other pulley, but A has this double floating pulley set up and will transfer that velocity over here to F. And so on this problem, I'm going to take a look and say, well, if F drops, then this cable pulls, this C goes upwards, B goes upwards, therefore A goes upwards. And so I can start here that A is going to move upwards at some unknown velocity VA. Okay, that's the only thing I know so far on pulley B. Now, because the center of A goes up um, at VA, I do need a second velocity vector on this body. And so if we take a look at this pulley system, one thing you'll notice is that the top of this cable that's connected to the right side of B is hooked to the ceiling. Now, if this cable does not stretch, the top and the bottom of this pulley fundamentally will have a zero velocity at this instant. Okay, once again, you can think about this as being um, it's a fixed length, non-stretching cable. And so at this instant, the top is not moving, therefore the bottom is not moving of this cable. Therefore, we have an ICZV by observation of the right edge of that pulley. Okay, while it's not actually touching a non-moving point, it is touching a cable, which that stretch of the cable, that length of the cable, is not translating up or down. Okay, so given that point, we can do get into our tip-to-tip -tip and tail-to-tail. -tail. Now, you might take a look at this ICZV and say, well, where's the tip and where's the tail? If it is a zero velocity value, the tip and the tail are basically on the ICZV. They're in the exact same spot. And so tail to tail here would be coming across this direction. Tip to tip would be coming up this direction here. So given this um, B, we have um, zero velocity here, VA. Now you can think that there's one radius coming over here to the middle. Then we have, so this is R. And then the distance all the way across this um, pulley is going to be two times r, right? So using similar triangles, if this is a base of r and a height of va, then this will have a base of two r and a height of two va. Okay, so two va is the velocity at this point here on the left side of that pulley. That velocity is then transferred up to the center of pulley c. So the center, uh, the center of pulley c is moving up at two va. Now, these top two pulleys here, E and D, it turns out that they're both fixed axes pulleys. That means that the middle of the pulley is not moving. Therefore, if the middle of the pulley is not moving, it is an ICZV. So as I'm labeling here, all of these plus signs are ICZVs of the various bodies. And so if the cable is coming upwards at 2VA to this left side, then I can still do my tip to tip and tail to tail if I'd like to. And what I see is really the velocity is just going to change direction, but not magnitude. So coming down at 2VA, and then that will come down here and attach to this side of pulley C at 2VA. Now this is where things get a little tricky. So I have these two velocity points. They are parallel. They are connected with a line that is perpendicular to both of them. And so this still follows the rule we talked about earlier. I can still do a tip to tip and tail to tail line. So here's my tail to tail. Tip to tip will look like this. Now, as we think about the difference in velocity between the center to this right edge, this distance right here, that difference, it basically goes, if we call downwards negative and upwards positive, we have a change of 4 VA. Okay, so you can think we have a change of 4 VA per radius, right, where the distance from the edge here to the middle is 1 times R. And so thinking about how much more will change the velocity as we move over here to this left side, we started at 2 VA. Right, that's right here. And then we have a change of the same change here, 4VA over 1 radius. And so this would be 2VA 
plus 4VA. So total here will be 6VA. Okay, so 6 times the velocity of A will be the cable velocity on this left edge. Now, that 6VA is going to get passed up here to E. And I'm going to condense this arrow. I try to write my arrows fairly um, scaling them with the overall velocity. It just kind of helps you graphically working through, but I kind of ran out of room here. So 6VA going up. That's going to come down on this side over here, also at 6VA. And what we're left with is that 6VA is also equal to VF. And VF, we know, is 0 0.5 feet per second. And that 0 0.5 feet per second, if we assign a sign to it, let's assume here that maybe positive is up. So this would be a negative value. So then I can find that VA is equal to 0.5 divided by 6. So 0 0.5 divided by 6. And that is going to equal the small velocity of 0 0.0833 feet per second. All right, so that would be my velocity of A. So there's a 6 to 1 ratio between the velocity of A and the velocity of F. Therefore, A will also travel 1 sixth the distance um, that F will over here and also have 1 sixth the acceleration of F. And so that's the generalized technique. Now, if we had started on the opposite side, if you started over here at F, um, working through there, you do run into an issue as you transfer the velocity over here to C, where you only know one velocity. And so at that point, you'd have to work from A, basically using the same technique we did here, would intersect at this point C, and then essentially across C, you could figure out this ratio of VF to VA. So that's the general technique. I hope that's been helpful, and hope you're having a great day.